asteroid and the tidal effect it could have. Why a 40,000 mile per hour Pacific Ocean bound rock could devastate the United States coast with a tsunami, of course. This has happened in the past. Obviously, we had it with the dinosaur asteroid strike 66 million years ago. Uh, now, Callum Hoare of Express UK explains what the scientists have warning, uh, warned us about. It's a warning that an asteroid striking the Pacific Ocean could utterly devastate coastal regions, including parts of the United States. That is assuming NASA fails to prepare and protect our Earth in the future. We have, as we said previously, an astonishing amount of material coming in at us. I think it was estimated at 40 tons of rock dust from, you know, tiny particle dust from asteroids that hit us every single day. 40 tons a day. Besides that, recently they found that we've got water coming in from comets. The uh, comets carrying icy water, 25,000 strikes a day from 20 to 40 tons of water a day. So we've got the dust from the asteroids and we've got, of course, these are asteroids that are so tiny that we don't see them, okay? And the other ones, the uh, comets, the icy comets, 25,000 a day carrying 20 to 40 tons each of water. They don't slam our atmosphere, they impact our uh, magnetosphere, and that's from when they come in. This is a recent study. I did a video of this a couple of days ago. Very fascinating. I was shocked at that. I was presently supply, surprised. Uh, they were looking to um, image the northern lights, the aurora borealis, and that's when they found some black blotches they couldn't explain. They sent up a special satellite 16 years later, and they confirmed that it is uh, comets inbound and uh, releasing that many a day, 25,000 a day, and releasing 20 to 40 tons of water a day. This amazing stuff they find out every, every so often. We've also had amateur astronomers spotting celestial bodies coming in at us, whether it's uh, from our own solar system or inter the interstellar uh, comets and bodies. Now they know, we know that there are millions of small rocky bodies in the solar system. ESA has come out recently with a, a an astonishing mapping of what they've found so far. They seem to be everywhere. Known asteroids and their impacts played significant roles shaping many planets, including our own planet. We've had recently a comet strike. They originally thought that was the one that uh, made the hole that created Hudson Bay. They originally thought it was and uh, set uh, the whole of North America on fire. They found soot from that fire everywhere along North America. But it did not just hit, the comet did not just hit North America, it also hit the Northern Hemisphere. Then they found that it was all over the Earth. It, it was a comet, a huge comet, that broke into at least seven pieces from what they found up to now. So you can see that we get uh, impacted once in a while and uh, with some effects that are earth changing as we can imagine. So NASA is constantly trying to track these bodies. They categorize them as near earth objects, NEOs, and potentially hazardous objects, PHOs, if they pose a threat to life on our earth. Cosmologist, cosmochemist Dr. Natalie Starkey is still concerned and she uh, claims that she has a theory in her 2018 book titled Catching Stardust. She questions what would happen if a huge rock smashed into an open space of water. You can imagine the displacement of the water, what that means. And she warned if we fall, if we fail in the future to protect the planet from space threats such as these, we could expect a large asteroid or comet impact to wreak havoc on Earth, resulting in a major global change and, of course, uh, high rates of death and, uh, who knows, maybe even extinctions. 
as has happened, have happened in the past. It wouldn't just be humans that would be affected, of course, by many other Earth species, or other species would be affected as well. Now, a comet or asteroid impacting one of Earth's oceans would result in huge tsunamis that could devastate surrounding coastal regions. It's anyone's guess how many millions of people would be affected by this tsunami radiating out from impact locations in the middle of the Atlantic or the Pacific Oceans. And she says, if we just imagine the ripples radiating out from a pebble being thrown to a pond with nothing to get in their way, the ripples would travel as far as the pond's edge. And Dr. Starkey went on to explain the idea into perspective, revealing sheer pace these asteroids can travel at. She says, although they would not be expected to demolish the pond's edge, depending on the size of the pebble, of course, and the force with which it enters the pond, it could expect, uh, we could expect the water to flood over the edges of the pond once the ripples reached that far, if it was a, an object that was quite big. And she says, now let's imagine scaling up to a huge chunk of asteroid, possibly a few kilometers in diameter, traveling at unimaginable speeds, up to 40,000 miles an hour, into one of our oceans. And she says the effect is the same, but the edges of the pond are now large cities inhabited by millions of people and the dense infrastructure that certainly could not cope with being inundated and pounded, bombarded by massive walls of water. She says a large comet or asteroid strike on land would not be much better, swapping water ripples for ground waves and resulting in huge shock waves that would easily flatten buildings at the same time as ripping up and melting the ground around the impact location. Because, you know, we've many a times spoken about the fact that it, would, it superheats the rock and melts it. It melts it, uh, creating, of course, uh, uh, earthquakes and even volcanic eruptions. And now, thankfully, NASA does have a plan, they say, to stop any such object long before it reaches Earth. Well, what is that plan? Asteroid impact avoidance comprises a number of methods such uh, by which NEOs could be diverted to prevent destruction uh, from impacts, Earth impacts. In 2018, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy released a report, and this new report titled National Near-Earth Object Preparedness Strategy an action plan. It's an 18-page document stating the steps that NASA and FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, will take over the next 10 years to prevent dangerous asteroids from striking Earth. And this is all, of course, to prepare the United States for the potential consequence of an asteroid strike. Now, Leviticus Lewis is the chief of FEMA's National Response Coordination Branch, and he explained, quote, an asteroid impact is one of the possible scenarios that we must be prepared for. It's a low probability but high consequence event, so some degree of preparation is necessary. Now, we do have four known asteroids that uh, could strike Earth. We have uh, Asteroid Bennu, which some people believe is like a small mini planet, coming at us year 2182. It's about 1,500 feet across in diameter and has a 1, 000, uh, a 1 in 1,000 probability of striking. Then we have the year 2027, 214 J025. That's about the same size and has a 1 in 8,300 probability of striking us. And uh, in the year 2040, we have 214 AG5. It's about 400 meters, 400 feet across. Probability is even less. It's 1 in 625 that it can strike us. And then we have the Apophis asteroid. It's coming at us uh, in about eight years. But uh, it will be coming around again in the year 2068. It's about 1,300 feet in diameter. The probability of that striking us is 1 in 150,000. And we're finding new ones all the time. 
Okay, the, in August, the beginning of August, confirmed by the end of August by the uh, space agencies. An amateur astronaut, Gennady Borisov from Crimea, with his own self-made telescope, he constructed it with his own hands. Uh, he decided to start observing the sun uh, low on the horizon, and that's where he found the inter interstellar comet, the new one, the second one that has come at us since 2000. 17 Umwama, and this one you can even see on your own if you have a telescope is between Earth and Mars orbits. You can see it now until December, and the um, international space agencies have a long time to study that. So uh, from what they tell us, we will have be having a lot more interstellar comets coming at us, unfortunately, because uh, we're talking about huge objects. Um, so, okay. Uh, NASA's planetary defense officer Lindley Johnson said this plan is an outline not only to enhance the hunt for hazardous asteroids but also to better predict their, predict their chances of being an impact threat on Earth well into the future and potential effects that it could have on Earth. It will help NASA set up our efforts to demonstrate possible asteroid deflection and other mitigation techniques and to better formalize across the U.S. government the processes and protocols for the dissemination of the best information available so that timely decisions can be made. And he said that future deflections would all be done by robotic spacecraft. Okay, God forbid, but it has to be done because we have had events in the past that have had mass extinction events from asteroid impacts, comet impacts, and uh, in this day and age where we have so much modern technology, uh, we should be using our efforts to protect Earth and humanity and all life on Earth from events such as this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.